Why do you think we gravitated towards shows like Breaking Bad, Mad Men, and House of Cards, which showcase protagonists who are horrible people? I think a lot of it is sort of competence p. We enjoy stories where the hero is insanely good at what he does, especially when it comes to being smarter than other people. One thing a lot of these shows have in common is a web of lies and manipulation. We all have some fantasy of being able to control the people around us and always have situations unfold exactly as we planned, and there aren't a lot of ways to depict that fantasy in a story without it being evil, or at least very morally grey. That's a really good point. With good characters, their actions and motivations are usually comparatively transparent. Some of the best scenes in Breaking Bad are when Walt's schemes go to plan. The way he manipulates Jesse is horrifying ethically and yet brilliant in scope and complexity. People love an anti-hero. They get away with a lot of things we wish we could, while maintaining their own personal sense of morals and justice. They're the ultimate individual and encapsulate a lot of our desires and aspirations. Comma people love an anti-hero. Frank Underwood is not an anti-hero. He is a villain protagonist. I think it's a mix. Part of it is that it's different. For year shows focused on the good guy. Another big part is that sometimes we wish we were them. That we could do all the things the dark parts of our brain think about but we never act on. This also goes with watching to try to understand why people do the crap they do. There really is no one answer. I believe that the anti-hero has taken center stage in television in recent years as the cable channels have become more aggressive and scripted programming. You mentioned two cable shows and a Netflix series, but before those series aired, shows like The Sopranos, The Wire, Weeds, Californication, Dexter, The Shield, Nip Tuck and Rescue Me revolved around anti-heroes, or at the very least, extremely flawed characters. Currently, Boardwalk Empire. True Detective, Ray Donovan, Nurse Jackie, Shameless, Justified, Sons of Anarchy, American Horror Story and The Americans, to name a few, have taken up the mantle as well. These series became hits, relatively speaking, and were able to find an audience on the cable networks because the bar for success is quite a bit lower than it is on the networks. These niche series would be deemed too dark for the networks in years past, though the big four have tried to ride the wave in recent years with shows like Hannibal, The Following and Rake. I'm sure there are others, with very mixed results. One show that did the flawed protagonist well was NYPD Blue, but the stars of that show were still very good people compared to their counterparts on the other side of the law. To wrap up, I think the audience interest was always there, but the content didn't arrive until the cable networks really started to target the darker anti-hero shows when developing its programming. I think audiences eat it up because it seems more fresh and real than the police department hospital law firm formula that we've seen for so many years on the networks. I know I'd rather watch a serialized show about a M dealer, a dirty cop or a mob boss than another episodic procedural. I actually think it all started with The Sopranos. Tony was a character you love to hate. That show wasn't so much about the mob as a whole but the flawed people involved in it. Side note, I just finished watching the series from beginning to end, so I'm still processing it. <laughs> Calling Don Draper horrible people is completely lazy and also, untrue. If you had to assign one of the most complex characters on television a single word description it would be amoral but with a rather strong personal moral code. Draper is entirely a person who has been shaped by extreme events in his life. He was the bastard son of H who was first raised by his resentful father and later by his even more resentful stepmother in a bordello. He later joins the army and is sent to the Korean War where he gets to see some truly horrific crap. Because of this, Draper is unmoored from conventional morality and on the surface does seem like a bad person. He is a borderline alcoholic serial adulterer who lives a self-invented life based on a series of lies and smokes too much. Yet I would take Don Draper over half the bosses I've had. So far, he has never stolen one of his underlings ideas or failed to credit them. His detachment from society means he also ignores its more unsavory practices for the times, routinely showing he does not give a frick about racism, homophobia, antisemitism or, in the show's biggest paradox, male chauvinism. In an era when women's roles were ruthlessly enforced, 
Draper sets the series in motion by recognizing the new secretary has his own gift for copywriting and instantly promoting her. Even with the women in his personal life, there is a certain degree of respect and fair play. He keeps his philandering, with just one exception, down in the city and limits himself to women who are in a way his equals. They all understand what they are getting with Don and he makes no bones about what the nature of their relationship will be. Having been witness to many forms of adultery over the years, it's hard to condemn Draper for what was a mistake in marrying Betty. His stepping out on her also show the limits of his amorality and that in this area of his personal conduct he would like to change. Don is also aware of how far down the rabbit hole he has allowed himself to go in opposite to the accepted norms of society and does not want to go further. This was the entire point of the episode The Jet Set when the ultimate culmination of Don's life is dangled in front of him and he rejects the implicit offer of a life of luxurious hedonism. To further drive home the idea that Don Draper is not the sum of these bad parts, there is someone in the office who is honestly a horrible person and is the embodiment of what some think of Don. Pete Campbell. In fact, my first brush with a random Mad Men episode made me think Pete was the main character and it was the story of a lying, scheming weasel as he rose to the top of the ad game. It's sort of a Madison Avenue Tony Soprano. Plus, and like Walter White and Frank Underwood, Don Draper has not cold-bloodedly murdered several people. Yup, Don isn't a horrible person, flawed, and complex, but not horrible at all emo. Not new, characters from shows like Dallas, 90,210, Melrose Place, and so many others were unscrupulous. Don't forget old Tony Soprano. I think it's because goodness is difficult. It's seriously so hard to be good, fair, just, or selfless. And characters that are those things seem unreal to us because we know how difficult it is to be the shining paragon of all that is good and pure. Like Pratchett's Captain Carrot. People are always shocked about how unflinchingly good he is. We like to hide behind cynicism. Claim it's unrealistic or impossible for a character to be good and happy and successful, because we feel uneasy about the idea that goodness is actually achievable and that it wouldn't hurt us to be better people. We insist that good people suffer and are taken advantage of and that in real life bastards have it easier, which is often true, but does not invalidate goodness one bit, because being good is scary. When you hear about someone doing something enormously good and selfless, like that teacher who died protecting her pupils during school massacre, or the holocaust heroes, you feel scared, uneasy, like you don't measure up to the enormity of their goodness. So it's better to pretend everyone is horrible, and not be reminded of the good there could be in us if we made an effort to nurture it. There was that book that was made into a TV show with a perfect heroic character, loving husband, good father, loyal friend, just, fair, plays by the rules, and all that. Edit Stark was a real stand-up guy. Dexter 2. Sure he only kills serial killers, but he was still murdering people, and I cheered him on the whole show. Because if it were shows about straight-laced hard-working men, who didn't cook em, kill, cheat on their wives, were good fathers, pay their bills through legal means, etc, no one would watch. That would be normal real life for most of us. Hey, I love Seinfeld. Because they're genuinely good shows, the anti-hero is a staple of literature and has been around since Homer, the poet, not the cartoon character. It's popular now because it's the current trend, just like the zombie phase, the vampire phase, the wizard phase, and the mockumentary phase. It'll die down when everyone's tired of it and then resurface again later. Because everything else on TV sucks, these shows are creative, different, interesting and extremely well made. And yeah, the protagonists are evil, but that's not why the shows are successful. Exactly, the only really good shows I can think of where the characters are good people are usually comedies, which aren't comparable to shows like Breaking Bad. It's been going on forever, ever read Macbeth? Because we are all horrible people and it is good to finally see people like us on TV. We haven't, confirmation bias. Of the three I'm only familiar with Breaking Bad, but calling Walter White a horrible person is narrow-sighted. He didn't start off as a horrible person, he started off as a pretty good dude, someone many of us could relate to because he's the kind of person who feels like he's not the person he could be. We see his evolution into someone who does some pretty bad crap, but even still we think well, 
he's doing it for a good reason, then that reason, providing for his family, disappears and he continues to do it and some horrible things happen as a result and we start to think well crap, Walt, I like your man, but I don't know about you anymore, it's the moral ambiguity that we love, because it's interesting and it challenges us, we find ourselves sympathizing with characters who, if we met them in real life, we'd loathe, or be terrified of, but we've been with them from the beginning and we know they weren't simply born evil, as few people are, circumstance and questionable decisions led them to that point, that's the way it is in the real world, and that's why we can connect with it more. My answer to this question would probably remind some of Game of Thrones. These shows revolve around characters who aren't completely bad or good, but a mixture of both, which can be related to real life, everybody has both good and bad qualities, and can't be designated as one or the other. You ask the question like it's a new phenomenon, but it's always been true. Macbeth, Crime and Punishment, Oedipus Rex, The Iliad, Death of a Salesman, all these have reproachable protagonist. The truth is good art has always been about sad things and bad people. Which by the way, bad is not the best term. Let's say complex. The Athenians put on theatre performances as a tribute to Dionysus. God of nature, wine, mischief, lust and anger. Philosophy and science are meant to explore how logical, kind and strong strong man woman kind can be. While art exists to explore how lost and weak we can be despite, in spite of our strength and knowledge. That is why Walter White is such a great character despite being a rational, good-hearted father, scientist and teacher he can does become a murdering emotionally driven drug lord, blinded by pride like all the iconic tragic heroes that came before him over the past few thousand years. The only thing new about Walter White is that he is on TV. TV is finally good. There is far more potential for complexity in an anti-hero like Walter White than in the standard good guy like, say, Superman. In a character like Walter White or Tony Soprano we get to see a struggle unfold and develop within the character itself. Superman is boring and predictable. We had no idea what to expect from Walter White. Usually men on TV are either the dumb husband type, or they're some version of the pretty boy superhero, or they're the villain. But not these guys. They're dominant males and they're not villains. That's something we're not accustomed to seeing, and apparently something that a lot of people wanted to see. Walter White Espicoli. You see him at the beginning of the show and he's such a broken, half alive man. He takes crap from everyone. His students, his boss, his son, even his wife. Recall her chastising him over finances in the pilot episode, even though she wasn't a bee about it, there is something very emasculating about that scene. And what we witnessed thereafter was 5, 6, seasons of a beaten and emasculated man reclaiming his power. And the bonus? He did not achieve power by constantly punching people in the face or sword fighting them. Seemingly the only characterization, caricaturization of male power that is acceptable in today's media. He did it through the other tools that evolution gave to men, an innate predilection to scientific solutions and sound reasoning, a dispassionate, calculating intellect, and an irresistible will to make his presence known and felt to all. We cheered every time he took another step. The epic rage quit at the car wash, lighting the doucher bag's car on fire, the fulminated mercury in Tuco's lab, I am the one who knocks, say my name, the jailhouse hit, Gus's demise tread lightly, etc. Really, they are just drawn out movies. Movies have featured bad protagonists for decades. It's all a setup for HBO's upcoming The Punisher. You know what? That's why I was so delighted to see the great Gatsby back in the mainstream. Gatsby's desperate misdirected idealism is such a stark contrast to the dark triad misogyny of contemporary leading characters. Why is Don Draper a horrible person? Besides the fact he cheats on his wife, only on Sarasen 3 but he seems like a pretty cool guy. But I'd love to have a discussion about this. I've talked to many people about subjects similar to this, and I watch too much TV. We view ourselves as differently now. People are more willing nowadays to concede that they are not the nice beautiful people they want to be. Television exaggerates reality, and we are able to see ourselves as relatively self-serving people. We hold our human selfishness back, but we want to watch the riches and success we can obtain from letting go of our integrity. The hero story is boring, 
This guy has a sense of right and wrong. His sense is exactly in line with ours. He stands up for the damsel in distress. He beats the bad guy, but only after struggling through a great failure in his power, equipment, will, etc. They're all hamburgers. Some have tomatoes. Some have bacon. But it's all the same freaking sandwich. Heroes are fake as frick. They're extremely artificial. You're watching Superman as a child who won't rough up a bully, even a little bit, because it's wrong to stand up for yourself. Come the frick on. That's not human. It's the Barbie doll of characters. You think Barbie is the ideal, until you actually see somebody who looks exactly like a Barbie doll. It's frightening and unhuman. Development. Watching a character becoming a superhero is tired and boring. You always know what's going to happen. Watching a character becoming a supervillain, and the startling sense of empathy you have for this character who is clearly evil and self-serving. Delicious. Failure fantasy. Hero movies etc. Showcase people who started from a substandard way of living and everything just kind of works out for them. For basically no reason. And we idealize and idolize that kind of life. But now, we're becoming more and more aware of the overt fantasy of it all, and we yearn for an emulation and exaggeration of our own lifestyles. People remember their failures much more acutely than their successes. So dramas that involve supervillains like those OP mentioned in the title, and even comedies like It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, Regular Show, Archer, Arrested Development, Community, etc. Typically revolve around failure as a theme. In comedies, the failure is typically in their actual actions. They attempt something and crap goes wrong. In dramas, it's often that they're failing as a human being. Their very souls are devolving. And it's working out for them. Which is scary. Failure fantasy is the same reason less intelligent people gravitate towards reality TV. They like being better than somebody. Because conflict is the bedrock of any great story. Especially characters in conflicts with themselves. Frank Underwood is an upstanding citizen. I have no idea what you're talking about. The Sopranos. How could you not put The Sopranos in the title? Tony was the first of this kind of main character. Uh, I like Adventure Time. Maybe because it's unfamiliar and interesting? Something we don't get to experience in our real lives. I think you're right. It's also not a known trope that is so familiar to people. Breaking Bad was great. For me at least. Because I had no idea where the storyline was heading. I've seen so many movies and TV shows and read tons of books that I can usually predict within the first 10 minutes or so how a story is going to play out. Not so with these shows. Especially with Breaking Bad. It. Morally unstable people who live vicariously through evil protagonists. I'm tired of it. I couldn't make it past a few episodes of House of Cards for this reason. Cable stations have finally reconnected with an adult fanbase that can tolerate ambiguity. Seriously. For too long TV and movie writers have been made to censor their characters and storylines to either conform to prudish broadcast standards, which still allow extreme violence, but cannot abide even moderate adult content, or to dumb down nuanced characterizations because their market research tells them we're stupid. Everybody does or at least thinks horrible things sometimes. These shows just finally represent adequately our actual adult internal states. These shows may be pot boilers, but at least they're pot boilers for adults. Because the only difference between them and us is a choice. There was an interesting story on NPR a while back. If I can find it, I'll link it. Talking about the narrative shift over the last century or so toward writing more complex bad guys. For a long time the trend was that we have a virtuous character who may have no idea why or how he has been thrust into a particular situation and the story is focused on his trials and tribulations of virtue. The antagonist in these stories never needed to be examined since they mostly had to serve as a tool to cut the protagonist down in some way. Most of us already know why we are good. So examining the motivations as to why the antagonist does the things he does becomes much more compelling. So the shift tended toward creating antagonists with very real motivations. Recently that shift has simply evolved into, really, putting the antagonist at the center of the narrative to watch their machinations unfold. People have always loved a bad guy. Look at Shakespeare. Full of C. Don't forget the most lovable narcissist in recent good TV history, Gaius Balter. 
For me these types of characters make me question what they are doing. They make me question my position on the things they are doing. Dexter is a great example of this. Personally I am not sure if I agree with Dexter's vigilantism or if I am appalled at him killing people. Frank Underwood has me questioning if I could pull off what he does for power and how he manipulates people. Thinking 20 steps ahead. Could I do that? Would I? Is Walter White really a bad guy? I mean he did take out multiple drug cartels, known drug dealers and murderers while he was creating his own empire. Conflicted characters make people think. They offer self-reflection for the viewer. Perfect characters. Superman. Captain America. ETC. Can't offer this. But they lack internal conflict on what they would do. They are essentially robots and don't reflect the human condition. Catharsis. Because Tony Soprano changed the game from the climatically abysmal post-Cold War pre-9-11 pipe dream mentality of the American sitcom. Thank god for premium television. In the past I think protagonists have been someone we aspire to be like. This new trend of the anti-hero is easier to identify with as we're all people with our own faults and mistakes. One reason is the writing on these types shows is light years ahead of current Hollywood movies. All of the best writers have gravitated towards episodic drama as opposed to superhero spectacle for the creative outlet as well as a full time job where the work isn't rewritten a dozen times by other people among other complaints. Why are the popular characters leads dark? It's often a far more complex character to write. Not to mention after a decade or three of the same thing. They feel fresh. And a million other reasons like others are saying. Source. I work in the film industry. Simple. Good guys beating bad guys and happy endings are boring and overdone. I'm sick of fairy tales. Just let me watch the world burn. I think at this point a lot of people are exasperated at having played the game according to the rules for decades only to get screwed for it. They've come to somewhat admire fictional characters who win at life by screwing other people over in the way that the viewers sometimes wish they could get away with. I don't know that anyone will see this, but Hamlet, Othello, Macbeth, none of these protagonists were nice people. They were great people thanks to cunning opportunity timing. But they were all ruthless and had people killed to advance their standing. I don't think we've gravitated towards anything new. Our dramas are as cutthroat and anti-hero as they have been for centuries. They're well written. And it's difficult to write interesting and intricate stories about one dimensional always good people. Even shows that don't focus on anti-heroes still rely on flawed characters. Sometimes to a fault. The difference these shows are a hit I would argue is due to TV having an explosion of talents transitioning to a story format that allows characters to grow in a larger arc than in a film. We get to see the growth and their reactions to real world scenarios that we would otherwise not see due to it being trimmed for time in a film. With a TV series you get a great opportunity to have a chemist lose focus due to a fly, or a politician kill a dog hit by a car to put it out of its misery. These moments would most likely be glanced over or substituted in a feature film due to time however in a longer format you get these moments that give further depth into who they are. That look you come to know with Don Draper when it comes to women. Or Frank Underwood's looks to the camera. And of course Walt's ability to muddle through a problem regardless of its size. The TV series above are written and pace in some instances to perfection. I would argue there's a variety of reasons why these stores appeal to us but ultimately these shows are successful because of their unique storytelling in an environment that has typically been lacking in that area for truly stimulating and moral, writhing writing. Because you pick the shows that star anti-hero especially despite the fact that there are many people who don't watch those shows or watch other shows. You have been visited by the source Chihuahua, you will be blessed with good pasta, but only if you comment simmer well. Papa simmer well papa. Like and subscribe you magnificent person.